Hey there homeschool friends, this is Carrie with Any Day Blessings and on this channel it's all things homeschool. I share our flip throughs of the curriculum we're going to use, day in the life, do a lesson with us videos, storing, planning, scheduling, all the homeschool things, you name it. If it's about homeschool, I try to cover it here to give you all some encouragement and some ideas along your homeschool journeys. If that interests you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and follow along as we share our adventure with you all. Now in this video, we're going to do a flip through, a look inside the book and see what uh, we're going to encounter this year for math for with BJU Press. I'm going to flip through this just briefly and I'm also going to let you know how I plan to use this course without a teacher's edition. Now I don't recommend that for everyone, but I do have a... Um, a degree in math and sciences and so I feel comfortable uh, teaching this course without the teacher's edition for now. We'll see how I feel mid-year <laughs> but right now I feel okay teaching it without the teacher's edition. So I'm going to go ahead and show you inside the book, show you inside the binder that I created and give you a rundown of how we plan to structure the course throughout the year. Uh, let's look inside the book first. And I will highlight, if I haven't already in this video, that it is the third edition. And the reason that I have the third edition is because BGU Press has accompanying videos to go along with their courses. They're distance learning courses and it has a teacher teaching every lesson directly to the student. It's not a camera set up in the back of the classroom or anything like that. It is a uh, production. It's put on with music and puppets and graphics and uh, slide presentations and virtual field trips. It is incredibly well done and I highly suggest if your budget allows that you do consider looking at those courses. But this particular uh, edition is what is used with the current videos. So there is a fourth edition available on the website. I chose not to purchase it so that I could have the option mid-year if I need it to uh, add the videos to the course. So that's why I picked the third edition. Just a tip, if you've never used BGU courses before, that's a good a good buying tip, is to get the edition that goes with the video courses, even if you are planning to do parent-led, and then that way you have options to switch to video learning later if you would, um, if you would like. All right, so the Math Edition 4, or excuse me, the Math 4 3rd Edition is not that much different uh, in content from the newer edition. I noticed that they, they pretty much teach the same topics. I'll just flip through this as I'm talking and you can grab some screenshots if you'd like. But I noticed that the main difference has to do more with uh, some of the other activities and exercises that they have the children do. The main content and um, layout of the course is, is pretty similar. Now you'll notice that I jump right into chapter 3 here because I've created a binder which I will show you in a minute. But basically the student text is laid out the same for pretty much every chapter. So showing you chapter 3 will really give you a good idea of all of the chapters. One thing that is missing, you know I'm going to show you chapter 4. I just said that and I'm going to show you I'm going to show you chapter 4 because one thing is missing and that's this right here. So at the beginning of every chapter, right here. At the beginning of every chapter, they do have this little section to the parent. Now, guys, this is one of the pieces of, of, of um, information that's contained in this book that is helping me teach without a teacher's guide. So this right here gives you some good ideas for hands-on math in the home. This gives you a basic uh, idea of what you're going to do in the chapter so you know uh, maybe some other materials, other resources, things like that that you might want to, to grab. It, it's just a nice little summary of what's coming and it gives you some good uh, supplement activities just right here. It starts off each chapter uh, with the new content and then it does often have review at the bottom of the page. Each lesson is pretty much set up the same way where the new content is on the front and then the same style of exercise repeats on the back with some review usually at the bottom of the back page. But I'm just going to flip through here. This is all for chapter 4. And then you come to this section right here. Now, 
This says daily review and there's a little bubble with a letter in it. There is actually a little daily review section to do in each lesson. So I'm going to go back to one of the lessons here. See how at the bottom it says complete daily review letter F? So it actually has you doing these daily review bubbles, okay, along with the lesson. So your child is getting content that was taught either in previous grades or even in previous lessons in this course every day. They're getting this much review every day along with the new content in their lesson. So plenty of review is already built in to the course. Once you get to the end of the chapter, there is a chapter review, and then there is a separate test packet that you could also take a test on this chapter. And then they also have the cumulative review that, again, brings in information from previous grades and from previous chapters in this book. The one thing I like about the cumulative review is it gets them started with practice if you, if you choose to give your, your student a standardized test. It gives that uh, multiple choice answer format. In fact, they even do indicate that this is test prep. Up there in the corner, that's what that says if you can't read that. So I like the format of the cumulative review for that reason because it does kind of give your students some practice with that multiple choice test format. I like this particular little uh, uh, added interest thing here. I don't know what to call it, but it's just a fun way at the end of the chapter to talk about a different job that you might, you know, consider having in the future. My son is all about what are different jobs that he could have, what are different careers that he could go into. And each chapter highlights a different career that your child may pick. And there were some in here that he was really, he, he flipped through this whole book. I want to, I don't know if I can uh, find find it. But there was one in here that he really, really liked. It was some sort of designer, I think a graphic designer or something like that. He thought that was a really neat job. So he didn't know that you could just draw for a living. He thought that was really cool. <laughs> so uh, this is just a, a real quick flip through of the book itself. Now I'm going to show you uh, something in the front real quick that also made me feel like I could teach this on my own without the teacher guide. So those at-home pages at the beginning of each chapter and this handbook here. Do you see this where it says handbook? When I looked at the uh, table of contents, I saw there was about 15 or so pages that were in the back of the book that I could use as a resource. And so when I got my book, I went right back to this handbook and I thought, well, my goodness, this is basically like teacher's charts. If you're familiar with uh, the BJU Press visual packets, this reminds me very much of those. Now, we use this particular thing. Here, let me hold this up a little bit. We use this particular page when we were teaching uh, the first chapter of place value. We are now on to decimals, which I thought at first it went in order of the chapters, but it really, um, it really doesn't uh, necessarily do that. But that's okay. The information's here. We are now using this as we're working on chapter two with decimals, and we are using this to define some terms, to give some examples that I write on the whiteboard and things like that, and then we just go directly to the lesson. So for example, I would get this out, um, review some terms, do some examples with my son, and then we would come over here to his work text page, and I would use the front side of this page to teach a lesson. So I would use this, again, as another example. Then I would have him do some examples um, while I'm there watching him to make sure he has the concept. And then his math assignment, independent work for the day, is this back sheet. Because all of the exercises on the back sheet here, we have done examples of those on the front together. So if he's stumped on something, he can just flip his paper over and say, okay, now we did a problem like this. How did we do that? That's right. I know how to do it now. So I'm able to use this little handbook and the front side of the work text page as my teaching visuals, my teaching materials, you know, my, my examples, all of that. And then he's able to come back here and do this independently and, of course, his daily practice. Now, for us, I actually am calling the daily practice math warm-up, and I staple it together, and I actually just have him... Uh, pull this out ahead of time. We actually do the warm-up before math, and I'll tell him which bubble to do. 
So he'll come and do this before math when he's done with this. Then we get into the lesson. So that is how we are doing uh, the BGU Press Math 4 just kind of making it our own again because I feel comfortable doing that having my uh, bachelor's in math and science so I'm not particularly intimidated doing this course without the teacher guide. Of course the teacher guide is a wonderful resource. There are lots of math practice fact sheets that you can print off and have your child do if you like the printed math drill. There are enrichment activities, there are review activities, there are tons of games and ideas. It's a tremendous resource. I just was looking to save some money and so I didn't get it and I felt like I could still do math just fine without it and so far we are in our third week of school so it's still a little early to tell for sure if this method will work for us but we're in our third week of school and I feel like things are going just fine. The math lessons are motoring along right about 20 to 25 minutes which is our sweet spot for math and he's able to then do math fact practice with flashcards or his math warm-ups or wrap-ups, or a couple of different websites that we've chosen to do math practice. So we are loving this particular course the way that we're using it. You can, uh, of course, leave your feedback below if you've used this course and have some other ideas to help some mamas out. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. And as always, if you have any questions or want to see anything else in more detail, please leave all that below, and I will catch you in the next video.